Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. Yeah. Ahoy, and welcome back. This is Fween the Skull Pirate with another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today, we've got a question for you. Are you tired of running quest after quest? Are you tired of running duty after duty? Are you tired of grinding out item after item just to get that perfect collectability? Well, maybe you need a break. Why not try the gold saucer out for a bit? There's a lot of fun and relaxation to be had from playing mini games all the way up to raising chocobos for racing. This will be the first in a series of videos explaining all that the gold saucer has to offer you. This will be just a basic overview, and the rest will delve a lot deeper into each experience that the gold saucer has to offer. For those of you that already have the gold saucer unlocked or know how to do this, you can go ahead and skip to around about the 220 mark. For everyone else, you unlock in Ulda right outside the Aetherite Plaza. Then, once you've talked to the well-heeled youth and gotten the quest to unlock Gold Saucer, you'll then turn left from him and go around the corner to take the lift down to the airship dock, which will allow you to gain access to the Gold Saucer. Once at the Gold Saucer, you're going to be presented with a quest that I recommend taking, which is going to be a basic tour of the Gold Saucer itself. You'll speak to various people of interest around the Gold Saucer before returning to the front desk for a nice reward. Next to the front desk, you'll find a lift that goes up to the Chocobo Racing area, as well as the Verminion area. Don't forget to grab the Aetherite to come back here as well as well as all eight shards to make getting around that much easier. The main Aetherite is actually in the center of the Gold Saucer. To the bottom left on the map is the entrance and main counter, as well as the card square. This is where you'll find most of the traders to spend your MGP, which is the currency that they use the Gold Saucer. To the bottom right of the Aetherite is the Wonder Square, with the Dome and Mahjong, as well as the Fashion Report. Up to the left of the Aetherite is the Round Square, which houses some gates that you can play through, which we'll go into more detail on later. Up to the right on the map you'll find the Event Square, where you can find the Jumbo Cactpot board. Up the lift you'll find the Chocobo Square for racing and breeding Chocobos, as well as the Lord of Verminion for battling minions. Speaking of all these things, once you have them unlocked, you can view them all from your character menu, at any time under the Gold Saucer listing. You have your card list of unlock cards, as well as decks that you can set and build. Your Racing Chocobo and its stats, Verminion standings and tournament details, as well as Domen Mahjong standings and its tournament details. Let's start at the main counter. Here you can find the MGP exchange, where if you're just starting out, or if you've spent all your MGP, you can get a bit to get you started, but it's limited to buying 500 MGP. If you have more than that, you can't get any, and it'll cost you 5,000 gil for that 500 MGP. This is also the primary prize claim area, for where you spend your MGP on things like gear, mainly for glamour, emotes, hairstyles, and various other items. You'll also find the mini cactpot here, that you can play for some quick MGP, if you're lucky. As with most areas, there's also a mender here, and next to them you'll find a card vendor to buy and sell cards. If you make your way over to the jumbo cactpot, it's very much a lottery. You pick your numbers, and there's a drawing once a week. It can net a ton of MGP, if you guess right. Also dotted throughout the Gold Saucer are a number of mini-games akin to arcade games. They vary in type and playstyle, and are a fun way for some MGP, and also can count towards your challenge log, if you have that unlocked. 
I suggest that as it gives bonus MGP each week. Every so often, gates pop up around the gold saucer. They're mini-games that can give much higher MGP rewards depending on how well you do, as opposed to the smaller arcade games. You can queue up for these in advance by talking to a gatekeeper. They're dotted around the gold saucer as well, and very easily found in pretty much every area. One of the more in-depth videos that I'm going to be doing is going to be based off of the gates themselves, because there are so many of them throughout the gold saucer, and some of them do have actual mechanics that you have to follow along with. Moving on to the next thing that we're going to have to make a full video on, we're going to be looking at the Fashion Report. Now, there are many resources out there on the Fashion Report itself, including Kyoko Star, who I will be linking below. They have both a Twitter and a Reddit page for info on all things Fashion Report. Standing next to Mastro's is a boutique vendor. Their boutique contains a number of dyes as well as a couple other items. Now, just for a basic overview, the Fashion Report is essentially, once you unlock it, you come over, you talk to Mask Rose, and they'll tell you what they're looking for in the most basic sense possible. Then, you have to come back wearing the appropriate attire and have them judge you. One of the things that you can do with Mask Rose is actually confirm the theme for the week. As I stated earlier, we'll delve into more with the focused video. Now, there's also the Triple Triad, which is the card game inside Final Fantasy XIV. It is based on a prior Final Fantasy game's card game. And while you can get cards all throughout the world, you can also get them from playing the Triple Triad game, as well as buying them at the Cold Saucer, and in various other places throughout Eorzea. Now this one will definitely require going more in-depth in its own video, however, if you'd like to, you can try out a few basic matches inside the Gold Saucer right at the main counter for Triple Triad. Yet another one that's going to require a full in-depth video is Mahjong. I personally am not very good at it, but that's because it requires a lot of practice and a lot of memorization that I just haven't really got the hang of yet. It also involves a little bit of luck. Now, you will see that there are three tables for the different levels of Mahjong, so the better you are, the higher level you can go to. I would suggest starting off with the novice table and playing against some AIs with the help tips turned on so that you can actually get a good idea of how to play before you actually start trying to do it all on your own or maybe even jumping into some tournaments. Now it seems like every game has this anymore. Everyone that collects minions, anyway. So Final Fantasy XIV's quote-unquote Pokemon game is the Lord of Verminion. This is where you can take all of the various minions that you've gathered throughout the world, or that you can buy in the minion trader shop here, and you're able to actually battle them. Now, it's not a standard, straightforward, face-to-face, -face, I send out this one, you send out that one type of battle. This is actually a tower defense strategy game, and it does take some thinking. It's pretty simplistic and easy to get into, but it does require a lot of strategy once you start getting into the tournaments for it. Now, there are four different types of minions you're going to be able to use, and three of them are set up in a rock-paper-scissors type situation, with the fourth one being neutral. Now, you will be able to see that each of the minions has their particular type assigned to it in a symbol over top of their image. However, if you click on a minion from the minion hotbar editor, you'll be able to see not just what type of minion they are, but their attack, HP, defense, and other stats, as well as whatever their special action happens to be, and their area of effect. This is another one that I'd suggest, if you're curious about it, go in and try out a trial run in the Gold Saucer, you'll be able to walk through just a basic overview of what a match actually plays like. Now, the next one on our list is going to be Chocobo Racing. Now, this one requires a little bit more work than the rest of them, whereas cards, you can go in and buy cards, or you can earn them throughout the world by defeating certain bosses, things like that. With Chocobo Racing, you have to unlock the chocobo racing. You have to go through and register your chocobo and everything else. 
and then you're going to also be training the chocobo. You're going to be leveling up or ranking up the chocobo. And you're going to be training it constantly with manuals and feed and everything else as it's ranking up. This one is going to be super in-depth and going to definitely require a major video, if not more than one video. You can come in here and take a look around at different things. I know that the feed can cost gill and some of the other manuals and things like that will cost MGP. However, if you want to just come through and look and see what's available, there's no harm in just looking at what's available. As far as actually racing the Chocobo, once you have it unlocked, you can actually race around a starter track that's just you by yourself, you're not actually racing anybody else, and it will walk you through the basics of what is going to be involved with the Chocobo race, including some of the buffs that you can find on a track, as well as different items that you're going to be able to pick up and use to either help or hinder yourself or your opponents. It also t walks you through the stamina bar and how that all works. When you actually get into racing, you'll notice that depending on where your standing is at the end of the race, obviously the higher to first you get, the better, you get rewards. There's also going to be a random reward that's assigned to anyone who was not in first place. One of the last things we're going to cover in this video is going to be the fact that you can actually access a lot of these things through the duty finder just like you would any dungeons or trials that you've already unlocked. There is going to be a separate gold saucer section that's going to open up once you actually unlock all of these things where you can go ahead and join a Lord of Verminion match or a Chocobo race or even a Mahjong match directly from the duty finder. Now this will allow you to, just like anything else that you queue up for, go in, pick what you want to queue up for, tell it to join, and then it will pop a commencement screen for you to click on. And that's it for the overview of the Gold Saucer! Hooray! You made it through the video! Now I'd suggest if you're tired of staring at dragon butts in dungeons and trying to play to mechanics that your entire party is completely ignoring, that you go give the Gold Saucer a chance. Go check it out. Go in, even if you're just going to check it out for a few minutes and maybe try out uh, a few of the arcade games, or if you're just going to play a match or two of Triple Triad. It never hurts to go relax in the Gold Saucer for a little while. When you're hanging out in an arcade, you tend to forget about what time it is and just have fun. Appreciate you for stopping in and watching the video the whole way through. I'd also appreciate if you could like, comment, and subscribe, leave feedback, and this be Thween the Skull Pirate signing out.